And at some point, you have to become an active and willing participant in the saving of your own ass. Welcome to the Bedros Coolian Show. If you're feeling lost, hopeless, and maybe just feels like life is passing you by, I'm here to tell you that I can relate. Um, I want to tell you guys a story about a time, well, one of the many times that I got fired. This place was called Broadway Bagel. And Broadway Bagel was on Balboa Island, just off the coast of Newport Beach. It's a tiny little island with multi-million dollar homes, yachts, and, you know, I don't know, maybe two dozen stores. And this particular store that I worked in was a bagel shop, right? Like a little cafe. And I forget the reason why I got fired. Who cares? I was obviously meant to be an entrepreneur, so it makes sense that I was fired. But when I got fired from there, I felt like my whole life was crashing around me. Because right around that time, also, um, I got out of a relationship with this girl who I liked, who I thought I loved, but was also bad for me. I also knew like we weren't good for each other, right? And so now I no longer have a relationship, so I feel alone. I just lost my job, my source of income, and I find myself having to move in because I had a roommate at the time. And so the following month, I had to move in back with my parents. And that was not a good feeling, guys. And uh, I really felt like somehow, like my life was fucked, right? And I was thinking like, man, I feel lost. I feel hopeless. I feel like like there's, there's nothing more that I could do. Uh, I keep losing jobs. And then what ended up happening is, the more I began to focus on what I don't have, the deeper I got into despair, into depression, uh, into self-pity. In fact, I remember the day that I got fired from that job, because they didn't just call me at home and tell me I'm fired. They actually fired me. Uh, when I get fired, I get fired on the spot. And they fired me and I was so down on myself that on the drive back home to Anaheim, and that's about a 35, 45 minute drive from Balboa Island. I stopped at three fast food restaurants because I've told you this in previous episodes, I'm an emotional eater, man, or I was an emotional eater. Now I've worked through that and I no longer emotionally eat when I'm stressed, overwhelmed, whatever, right? And so I stopped at a Taco Bell and like binge ate and then drove maybe 10 miles and then stopped at a KFC and got a whole bunch of shit there and binge ate and then drove like five more miles and got a foot long Subway sandwich with all the sauce and cheese and all that crap on there and ate that. And certainly wasn't because I was hungry. You know, in hindsight, I look back, you know, there's no way you could eat Taco Bell, KFC, and a foot long sub. And in a short amount of time in a 35, 45 minute window, because of hunger, I was emotionally eating self pity, I was trying to destroy myself if you really want to, if I want to be honest about it. And so I realize now I, I, I get so many DMs, I get so many messages from y'all asking me like, hey, what do I do if I feel like my life is fucked and how do I get out of this funk? And I wanna tell you, first of all, you're not alone. It happens to the best of us. And um, secondly, I'm gonna hopefully give you a strategy here to get out of that funk. So let's get started. Guys, welcome to the Bedros Koulian Show. My name is Bedros Koulian, and this is the show where I focus on helping you build more money, build muscles and get jacked, and of course, self-mastery. Money, muscles, and self-mastery. Why is that important? Because I truly believe that if you have your, when I say muscles, I mean your health, your fitness, right? You, you can live longer. You're, you're not gonna be medicated and feeling all fucked up. And then money, because you need money for the, paying your bills for the financial freedom that you want and deserve. And of course, self mastery allows you to keep both. When you have developed into the higher version of yourself, you can keep the money and keep growing the money. And you won't squander it through self sabotage. And when you when you focus on 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 meaning and purpose, and you compound that with money, like man, that's a great thing. And then when you focus on your health, <clears throat> you 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 learn skills and traits. Like it, it is a very powerful thing to know that you can be so disciplined, so consistent, you can be so focused that over time you can burn fat, put on muscle and change the shape and the structure and the composition of your body, man, that gives you a high level of confidence. So let's talk about this, man. Like, like I said, I was, I was someone that felt so fucked in my early, early twenties. 
and I've told you this too, like the early starts wasn't wasn't the best for me. I mean, I was carjacking, we were doing home invasion robberies with friends, and then I was like, all right, I'm gonna get a job, right? So I started getting jobs and I keep getting fired from jobs. And this Broadway bagel at, at, at Balboa Island was one of them. And I didn't feel good about myself. And I and I think to myself, how could things have been different for me? Like, what would I advise my younger self, right? Because now I never allow myself to get into despair into a place of darkness, into a place of anxiety and depression and hopelessness. And, and I realize it does come from three different areas. And so this is how I would have coached myself, right? And I wanna coach you guys on it because if you are truly in a place where you find yourself, look, I don't know how said, if you find yourself being a fucking loser, if you find yourself being a loser where you, you wake up whenever you want, or if your alarm goes off, you hit the snooze button two, three, four, five times, you get out of bed, you, you don't even drink water, you go to coffee and then you put, up, put on the clothes that, that you wore yesterday, you don't even brush your teeth or take a shower, you, you, you know you ought to do something because your conscience is telling you you ought to do something proactively to become an active participant in pulling yourself out of that shit. But instead you go, well, I've got all day long to do stuff. I ain't got no job, I ain't got nothing to do. And so you procrastinate, and how do you procrastinate? Typically you procrastinate by playing video games, watching porn, watching binge watching TV shows. I mean, there's a million ways you procrastinate. You procrastinate by just you know scrolling through social media, right? And before you know it, the thing that you said, well, you would do, you never did. And so you never got any wins. You literally started the day off with so many losses. And now your body never saw any sun and you didn't, you didn't hydrate yourself first thing in the morning and your body's been dehydrated all night. You're probably eating bowls of cereal or some kind of boxed or packaged fucking food that's fully processed and it's not good for you. That's only creating a more of an insulin spike. And now you're probably drinking some kind of energy drinks, monster energy drink, Rockstar, whatever the fuck is out there. And what is that doing? That's just putting way more stimulants in your body. You're adding more energy into a body where you don't plan on doing any work with it. You don't plan on working out because you kept putting that off and procrastinating until it, it got late in the day. And so what do you do? You fool yourself into saying you're gonna just work out tomorrow. And you really repeat that whole thing, right? You repeat the whole fucking day to your, uh, and, and so you have all this energy now that you put into your body from sugars, processed foods, and caffeine and stimulants, but you didn't work out, so then you wonder why you're anxious and you can't sleep at night. You have energy, and anxiety is all that energy that's unused. And then you feel bad, guilty, shame, you feel regret for not doing what you should have done to get yourself out of the muck. And so now you feel depression. This is your conscience knocking on your door and telling you, hey man, what you're doing here is not working. Yet you continue to get up and do the same thing. Wake up late, don't hydrate your body, drink coffee, energy drinks, sugary foods, processed, you isolate yourself, you escape, right? There's like all these types of different escapes, entertainment addiction, is an escape, procrastination is an escape, vaping, smoking weed, drinking is an escape, TV watching is an, is an escape. There's all these different escapes that you have that you procrastinate and kick the can down the road and you wonder like, why is my life all fucked up? It must be the government. It must be uh, the bad president. It must be this inflation. It must be the war in Ukraine. Well, what if it's not any of that? What if it's actually you? You begin to kind of blame everything outside that are out that's out of your control. You never once go inward and say, what are, what are the variables that I can control? I can control my attitude. I can control my effort. I can control what I do next, right? Doesn't mean I have to go work out in the happiest of state, but if I can drag my ass to the gym and in the process of going from my fucking apartment or my house to the car, if I get a little sun on my skin, that might make me a little happy. That might begin to actually stimulate my immune system. That might bring in some dopamines. That might bring in some, you know, endorphins. And when I work out, I might get some more endorphins. I might get more dopamines. I might actually feel like I did something. I got in the car, I drove to a place, I did a thing. That's pretty fucking important for a human to have some level of purpose. And when you find yourself that you're fucked and you're living this life of like waking up late, wearing the same clothes, not hydrating, not eating right, not being a productive member of society, feeling guilty and shame and regret about it, and then having anxiety and depression, eating packaged foods, 
binge watching shit, social media, TV, pornography, like the cycle does repeat, right? And then blaming, blaming, blaming because, well, you know, other people have some advantage. Fuck you. Fuck you. No one has an advantage. Every fucking person has had a tough life, motherfucker. And at some point, you have to become an active and willing participant in the saving of your own ass. Like, no one is going to gallop in on a horse and save you. Like, there is no knight on, 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 a, on, a, on a white horse that's going to come in and save your ass. Like, you are your own knight in shining armor. And so if you're watching this and you're like, dude, show me the way, I will. But I'm asking you for your commitment, bro. I'm asking you for, and I say this with love and compassion, man. When I get fucking upset at you guys, it's because I wish someone would have spoke to me this way. I wish someone would have showed me that it is not the external things that are happening. Yes, we got a fucked up president. Yes, the pharmaceutical industry, uh, the media, uh, everything is working against us right now. Our constitution is being torn to shreds. Inflation is through the roof. Everything is expensive. I get all of that, right? I get all of that. But those are external components that you can't control right now. But there are things that you and I can control. So why not do something about that? And if you started to control yourself and I did myself and everyone here started controlling themselves, guess what? As a whole, as a community, we began to rise and we can actually change the course of our country, of our planet, of our world, right? The opposition wants you to stay depressed, dumb, dopey, dependent, drugged up. The opposition wants you to stay like that, uh, to be a victim. Fuck. The opposition wanted me to mope and to emotionally eat and then to stay inside and isolate myself and not go out there and look for another job. They want that because the more dependent we become on the government, on the system, the more they can tax everybody. And this is how that cycle begins. This is how you become a human slave. And if you want to break out of that human slavery that you've put yourself into, and you're probably wondering, whoa, 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 how did I put myself into this? I'm going to explain that to you. Because there's probably three reasons why you're here, right? Why you're in this fucked up state. And I can tell you these three reasons are this. One, you're probably indoctrinated. In other words, programmed. You were programmed by your mom and dad. You were indoctrinated by school teachers. You were, you were programmed or indoctrinated by your aunts, your uncles, your grandparents that, Hey, you know, uh, get good grades, uh, go to college, get a job. You'll meet a nice lady and you'll get married. You'll have great kids. And you realize like, fuck man, I did all that. Now I have college debt. All I do is watch porn. There's no chicks to, to like worthy of me dating and getting married to and no one really wants to fucking marry me and i don't know what else to do well we can do something about that you know you can do something about that so if you were indoctrinated and you just woke up and you're fucking 28 38 48 years old 58 years old and you're like fuck the shit that i was taught about the system is all wrong and the system is designed to just make me work to tax me and to make me dependent how do i break free because all I do is go home and just go through this entertainment addiction, food addiction, vice addiction, alcohol, weed, vaping, go to sleep, wake up, repeat the whole fucking cycle again. And on top of that, I have school debt. So you're either indoctrinated or, or you've had some trauma, right? I've told you about my trauma. I told you about how I was sexually abused by two older boys when I was, when I was between the ages of four and five in Armenia. Over and over again, these motherfuckers sexually abused me. And when we escaped and came to the United States, my parents don't realize they saved me from a constant molestation, right? Like that left trauma. That made me feel unlovable, unworthy of success and happiness. And so I kept self-sabotaging throughout my life all the way to my early 30s, man, until I had that big anxiety attack that I've told you guys about. I kept seeing success and then I would do something to sabotage myself because I didn't feel worthy of it. And when you don't feel self-worth, you begin to find reasons to fail and to slide back to the identity that you have taken on because of some kind of abuse or trauma or circumstance that took place. You can heal through that. It wasn't until I worked with the therapist for 15 months and healed through that, that I was able to break these beliefs that I had about myself. 
Then, surprisingly, I found more meaningful love, better connection, more money, became an awesome leader. And I share that with you because I wanna be the person to let you know there is hope, but you can't wait for someone to come by and save you. And you can't wait for someone just to reach out to you with an opportunity. You have to be actively participating in the saving of your own life. If we're all sitting in a boat right now and the boat capsizes and there's like 15 people drowning, I'm the only guy that's still on the boat. I'm throwing life preservers out. You have to swim to one. If you're upset that I threw one out and you still have to swim 20 yards to get to it, so you're just going to bob there like a fucking buoy until you drown, guess what? Maybe you deserve it, right? But if you've decided that you're going to do something about it, then welcome. I'm going to help you. And the third thing, by the way, like I said, indoctrination and programming is one reason you might be fucked up, right? And now you had this awakening like, holy fuck, I need to become sovereign. I need to take control of my life. I need to make money, get jacked, and develop in self-mastery. Because what I was told by my teachers, by my parents, by my grandparents, everybody meant well, but all they did is just indoctrinate me and program me to be back in the system. And I want to break out of the system. That's one reason you're here. Second reason is you were abused. You had trauma like I did. And so you didn't have self-worth and you just kept self-sabotaging yourself and kept yourself in this fucked up place like I was until I was able to break through by seeing a therapist, working with a the therapist, like doing the self-work, doing the deep work and healing my traumas to find love and meaning and purpose and, and money and, 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 and a team, right? To be a part of. Third reason is you probably got a bad break. And that's the human condition. You know, my, my friend Jason Redman, uh, he's a retired Navy SEAL. He, he wrote a great book called Overcome. Um, in his book, he talks about life ambushes. And let me tell you his story real quick. In 2008, while he was on a mission in Iraq, you know, their, their helicopter, he and his team of five or six Navy SEALs, they landed way over there, about 400 yards away from the target house that they were going to hit. They're going to go get a bad guy. The dude was making roadside bombs and fucking, you know, blowing up American convoys and shit. And so as they're creeping up on the house, they're like 150, 200 yards away. There's a big giant plane up in the sky. I forget what it's called. If y'all are watching this on YouTube and you remember what that plane is called, uh, the big giant one that can also shoot shit and it can see infrared and thermal lens. But that plane spoke down to Jason who had his earpiece and it's like, hey, we just saw three dudes run out of that target house. They went 50 yards that way and they're hiding in those bushes. We can see their body's heat signature. So Jason's like, yeah, copy that. Him and his men are walking closer. And he thinks that they're just hiding out and that they're gonna go and capture them. And if those guys, you know, make any attempt to do anything, then they're gonna to have to whack them. Well, what that plane up there didn't see, because there was no heat signature, is those guys were laying down behind machine guns. They had heard the helicopter drop off Jason and his team of SEALs. And so when Jason and his team were about 15, 20 yards away from them, they lit up those PKM machine guns and they zipped Jason across the body, one shot through the, through the cheek and blew off his nose and his orbital plate. Another shot right into the arm, and boom, he collapses. Gunfight begins. His guys have M4, which are like the AR-15 rifles. The bad guys have machine guns. Now, Jason finds himself on the X in a life ambush, right? This guy is the predator. Him and his buddies are going to get the bad guy, and now they find themselves on the X, ambushed. And they have to do everything they could to get that plane up there to drop bombs in a dangerous, close environment and kill the bad guys so that his guys can save Jason and get him off the X, get him off of that ambush. So sometimes life does give you life ambushes. That is the human condition. There is no person that I know of who has been so bubble wrapped, who has been so sheltered that they have made it through life without having their heart broken or losing a job or finding out a loved one has a disease. There is all types of ambushes that take place and your creator has also empowered you and me with the internal tools to be able to help ourselves 
but he's also given us free will. So he goes, hey, you can ask for help. You can watch a YouTube video on how to unfuck yourself like you are right now. You can take action on it or not. You can just discount it and be like, ah, fuck it. This ain't going to help. It's easier to go and uh, pay $9 a month to that OnlyFans account, jack off into my old gym socks, eat another bag of Cheetos, and start playing video games. You could do that and just keep going deeper into hopelessness and despair, right? So God, the creator, has given you free will, man. What are you going to do with it? He's also giving you the tools to ask for help, to seek for help, to read books, get a therapist, go to the gym and start working out, figure out how you can add value to humanity, go and sign up for a mud run, go and fucking do, a, do some kind of a Spartan race, go to a, an event where there's like-minded people. There's a million things you can do, but that's actually being an active participant and helping yourself. Maybe you're still in this phase of, I need, a, I need a further shit on myself. I need to still be a victim. I need to still live in despair. And if that's the case, well, keep watching this. Give me a thumbs up still. Hope you subscribe. Share this video. Maybe someone else will get value from it if you won't, right? So know that if you've had a bad break, it's a life ambush, man. And you might be in this fucked up place too. And if you're in this fucked up place, you're not alone. It is a human condition. And when you get to the other side of this fucked up place, by the way, guess what? You've developed new armor. You've developed new tools of being able to cope through adversity and pain new lessons that you've learned that you won't repeat those mistakes again. And in the future, you get to be a role model to others who are going through that, right? At 49 years old, I have had such fucking crazy ass life experiences that I can share my life mistakes and lessons with you so that you will use me as a cautionary tale and as an example. Like, I appreciate all of you leaving comments and calling me like, B's like the dad I never had. He's like the uncle I never had. He's like the big brother I never had. Well, guess what? You need to be that guy too to someone else. You got to pay it forward. This is how we change humanity. But before you can pay it forward, you got to start first helping yourself become an active participant in the saving of your own life, right? Could you imagine when Jason Redmond, that Navy SEAL I was talking about, who was shot up, when his guys were like shooting and shooting and shooting and a couple of them risked their life to go and grab Jason and drag him, Jason starts thrashing and takes his pistol and trying to shoot them. Like, like what the fuck, Jay? Why are you trying to shoot us when we're trying to save you? They would just leave him there, right? But you got to be an active participant in the saving of your own life. So whether you were indoctrinated and programmed, whether you were abused and you have trauma and so you have self-worth issues and you're not letting yourself have joy and bliss and happiness and feel purpose and have meaning, or, or whether you just had a bad break, man, and you're experiencing a life ambush, and I promise you this, you are going to have more life ambushes. You're, you're going to have these, these, these seasons of life. People are going to die. People are going to get sick. You're going to have an unexpected call where someone got into a car accident. You're going to lose a job. Your business is going to go under. You're going to be in massive debt. You might have to go into bankruptcy. You might get sick. You might get a disease. Something might happen. A car gets stolen. You might get mugged. There's a lot of things. She might break up with you when you didn't see it coming. You have to be an active participant in the saving of your own life and to building the better version of yourself into levitating, into evolving, into transcending into the 2.0 version of yourself. Because if you don't, then you have exactly done what the opposition wants, which has become another dopey, dependent, in debt, destitute, dumbass. That was all unintentional, but I nailed it, didn't I? Guys, I'm sharing this with you because how can you then do the opposite? How can you win? So if you find yourself in a position where you're all fucked up, there are things you can do to win. And I want to share that with you here and now. Understand that no matter the life ambush or the programming or the abuse, that you're going to have to do certain things to win. Thing number one is to wake up at a certain time, set your alarm to a specific time. It doesn't have to be 5 a.m. Whatever time that you've committed to, set your alarm and wake up. When you wake up, don't hit the snooze button. Just by not hitting the snooze button, you already have a W, a win, right? Because think about this. If, if tonight I say I'm going to go to sleep, I'm going to wake up at 5.30 in the morning, so I'm going to set my alarm for 5.30 in the morning, then my alarm goes off at 5.30 in the morning, I hit the snooze button. Well, guess what I did? I broke a promise to myself. I made a promise, and then I broke that fucking promise. I stacked an L, a loss. So set your alarm for tomorrow. Wake up. Don't hit the snooze button. You just got a W. 
bring water upstairs with you, wherever your bedroom is. For me, it's upstairs. So bring water with you the night before, ideally 20 to 30 ounces. When you wake up, chug a lug as much of that water as you can. Rehydrate your body. Your body dehydrates at night. Instead of going right for coffee or an energy drink, actually hydrate your body. Next, open windows, curtains, get some natural sun and some light into your room. Fix your bed. Fix your bed. I think there's like a Navy SEAL uh, admiral who has a viral video that went viral on YouTube. He did a whole like commencement speech at a, at a university somewhere. And he says, fix your bed. Because if everything, like when you wake up in the morning, fix your bed. Because if everything else during the day goes wrong, you come home tired, exhausted, beat up, tore up from the floor up. You've got a nice, beautiful, fixed bed to crawl into, right? Fix your bed. And then take a shower, wear clean clothes, go outside, get some sun, knock out 50 or 100 burpees first thing in the morning. Instead of scrolling on your phone, just tell yourself for the next 60 minutes when I wake up, I am not going to scroll on social media. Condition yourself to not be addicted to screen sucking. And if you can do that, now you've showered, you've gone out, you've got some sun on your skin, you've knocked out 50, 100 burpees, now you can start your day and actually eat something healthy. How about a high protein meal? How about five egg whites and two whole eggs? How about a protein shake, right? Instead of heavy carbs and processed food, lots of sugars and caffeines, and I'm not saying don't have caffeine, have a cup of coffee, bro. But to live on a constant drip of caffeine and energy drinks and then to wonder why you're anxious is stupid. That is why you are anxious. We talked about that. And you know what's wrong. You know everything that you've been doing up to this point, which is the opposite of what I'm describing now, is what keeps you in the cycle of despair and hopelessness. So I'm not saying that you have to do all of this with like, you know, enthusiasm. You can't, but do it anyway. What do we hear Jocko Willing say all the time on his show? All the time, right? And guess what? We hired Jocko to speak at um, the Fit Body Bootcamp World Conference a couple years ago and then had him speak at uh, one of the masterminds that I run. He keeps driving the same point home. He goes, you just do it anyway, right? You don't feel like it, you do it anyway. You're tired, you do it anyway. You're exhausted, you do it anyway. You keep the promises to yourself. It's raining, you do it anyway. It's cold, you do it anyway. It's gonna be hard, but you do it anyway. That develops a muscle called a discipline muscle. You do it anyway. And soon, before you know it, you're actually doing it with enthusiasm. Soon, the things that you hated doing have become a habit. Soon you see the results of it because you keep doing it, so you're encouraged and you have more confidence. Those are all the things you don't have when you're all fucked up. And if we're trying to unfuck ourselves, then we have to wake up on time, drink water, see some sunlight, shower, wear clean clothes, make our bed, go knock out outdoors, just knock out 50 to 100 burpees, get some sun on your skin, Wake up your metabolism. Tony Robbins always says the fastest way to change your mental state is to change your physical state. Your mind follows your body. So instead of waking up and screen sucking and then eating your bag of Cheetos, drinking energy drinks, turning on a video game like you normally do and then feeling like a loser for it, do the complete opposite. Even if you have to force yourself to do it right now. Soon it will be fun. First it'll be forced, then it will be fun. I promise you. You go, but what if I don't feel like it? You do it anyway. What if I'm tired? You do it anyway. What if it's going to be hard? You do it anyway. Well, what if I didn't sleep well last night? You do it anyway. What if it's really, really cold? You do it anyway. What if I didn't do it last night? You do it today. What, are you going to repeat being a fucking loser? Two days, three days, four days in a row? Are you going to make being a loser a habit? Right? And so when you've knocked out your burpees, you've, 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 you've done something productive in your life, got some skin, got some, high pro, got some sun on your skin, got some high protein meals in, you got water, you got hydration. Holy fuck, you might just have some optimism for your life. You might actually feel like today's going to be a good day. 
Shout out to Ice Cube. Ed, you know what I'm talking about. Right? Like today's going to be a good day. So you might just go out there and try and make some money. Find yourself a job. Start that business. Fix that relationship. Go and get your bench press, shoulder press on, bicep curls, tricep presses. Build those t-shirt muscles, bro. And in the process, you might find a honey in the gym. And when you do, God damn it, you stacked so many wins this morning, you might just walk up to her and say, what's up, girl? Today's a good day, right? Like, you see how snowballs, like being fucking awesome, snowballs, just like being a loser, snowballs. And if you're not isolating yourself, you're actually putting yourself out there in the gym. Maybe you're going to a bookstore and reading a book. Maybe you eat a, another meal that's high protein, Holy cow. Oh my God. He just ate two high protein meals. He's got some veggies in there. He's not eating out of a bag that's fucking hooked to his ears. Like it's a fucking horse with a, with a, with a bucket hooked onto his mouth. Like you've become a fucking robot. That's why you're in despair. That's why you feel hopeless. That's why you feel like your life is useless and there's no meaning to it. You've assigned no meaning to your life and therefore there's no meaning to it. What if you actually went to the gym and then you ate a meal that was healthy and then you said hi to people and actually connected with humans instead of just being isolated? Like, hey, man, nice shirt. Hey, nice shoes. Hey, that's a nice jacket. Hey, wow, nice car. How fast does it go? What do you do? Wow, I didn't know you could bench that much. How long have you been? Like, start a fucking conversation. I think what I'm asking you to do is to be human again. I think that's what I'm asking you to do. If you really want to unfuck yourself, you would do what humans would do. And how sad and pathetic is it that I have to sit here and tell you the things that you know you need to do? Because your conscience already tells you that. I bet if I took every single one of you that are feeling hopeless and despair and sad and disappointed and let down and heartbroken and you're broke, I bet if I took every single one of you and put a gun to your head, it's like, tell me right now, motherfucker. Tell me right now. Tell me exactly how to be a badass human. From the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep, motherfucker, tell me right now, you would be able to tell me. You would make the fucking perfect list. Well, you first set an alarm, and then you wake up to that alarm, you don't hit the snooze button, and then you drink your 30 ounces of water, and then you make your bed, and then you shower, and then you wear clean clothes, not old clothes. You open the curtains, you let the sunlight in. And then when you let the sunlight in, you go downstairs, you do 50 to 100 burpees outdoor, you get some sun on your skin, and then you eat something high protein, maybe have a little coffee, but don't suck down energy drinks and ho-hos and fucking Cheetos and let that dust go into the belly button. Don't make your titties all jiggly. Instead, go to the gym and get a work out and on a consistent basis wear a shirt that's a size too small to make you look even more buff walk up to a chick say what's up girl have a conversation when you have that conversation you actually start being social when you start being social guess what some chicks are gonna think you're a weirdo others might actually talk to you now you start building confidence you might even make a plan to take this honey out to a dinner date to lunch maybe a little coffee Ah, oh, b you're being too old school i just want to hit it and quit it you're a fucking retard if that's the mindset that you have, because you want to porn hub it and OnlyFans it and then hit it and quit it, you fucking loser. Like at what point do you plan on being an active participant in humanity? At what point do you actually plan on being a good human who actually contributes to society? At what point do you plan on being a good role model so that maybe one day you might have a wife or kids and you could lead them? And if you have a wife and a kid, and you're in this fucked up state, motherfucker, you have a responsibility to pull yourself out of this state. I'm not saying that as a man, you ought to fake it, but I'm saying as a man, you know what you need to do. You need to eat right, you need to work out, you need to get sun, you need to be optimistic, and you are only gonna be optimistic when you start serving humanity. Go out there and just be good to other people. Go to a homeless shelter and start feeding them. Work at the soup kitchen on a weekend. It's funny when we see people who are in a place that's lesser than where we are, we begin to feel grateful for what little we have, right? And understand that when you start doing these things that I'm listing off, guys, at some point you're going to experience a dip. You're like, man, I'm hitting my rhythm. I'm getting out of this funk. I'm feeling good. I'm developing a habit. And then boom, I don't know, a month or two or three, you're going to hit a dip. That is normal. That is accepted. You know what you do? 
You just jock a willink right through it. You do it anyway. What does he say? Good, right? Good. Good. Do it anyway. Fucking good. Do it anyway. I've got the most boring life on the planet. You know why? I just do things that I'm supposed to do. My life is very predictable. I've got a calendar on my schedule that my assistant Joan fills up with coaching calls, coaching people. Uh, if I got to take Chloe to a volleyball game, if I got to take Andrew to the dentist, like dad stuff and work stuff and fitness stuff and travel stuff and speaking stuff and coaching stuff. And guess what? I got a predictable life and just serving humanity. And in the process of serving humanity, I serve myself. But the moment you go selfish and you isolate and you're in a dark room, you don't see sun. Now you're getting depressed. Your conscience is telling you, you know what you need to do, but you keep avoiding your conscience and doing the stupid shit, the vices, the binge watching, the addiction to entertainment, pornography. Then you feel shame and regret and you procrastinate and you say, I'm going to do it tomorrow, but then you repeat that shitty cycle. This is why you're in that state. So guys, I want to fucking beg you. I want to implore you. I want to encourage you that today is the day that you change all of that. This is how you unfuck yourself. And if you know someone who's all fucked up, if you know someone who's in that dark state and you're like, man, they need to talk to you like this, forward this episode to them. Help a human out. Forward this episode, say, I listened to this and I think you'll benefit from this. And then let them know that you'll be there for them to go to the gym, to do those burpees, to be that human connection. Because that's what we need to do, man. We need to help each other out. What is the opposition trying to do? Divide, 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 and separate us. Divide us by color. Divide us by religion. Divide us by, by how you feel about the vaccine. Divide us politically. Because the more we can stay divided, the more we will fight each other and not see all the damage that they're doing and how they're eroding the Constitution, taking away more of your freedoms. But imagine if you could actually help your fellow man. Holy shit. You become an unstoppable force for good. So you know what you need to do. You do it anyway, no matter what. Friends, I hope you got a lot of value from this. If you did, please do me a favor and share this episode. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, 74% of you watching this are not subscribed. Do me a favor. If I delivered the value, subscribe to the show, uh, share it, leave a comment, all that cool shit. And above all, remember that average is the enemy, that success is your responsibility and change will take place in an instant if you are willing to flip the switch. Love you guys. I'll see you soon.